Hi, welcome to Wellness. I'm your host, Linda Lonigan, Senior Clinical Nutritionist. I'm here to show the very best your community has to offer in health, fitness, nutrition, well-being, amazing people, and events. Today I'm joined by a remarkable man, Dr. Brian Yotis, who is a chiropractor and specializes in sports medicine. Thank well, you so much for being here. Thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, I wanted you to be on first because it's very important on my show that people are one of his inspiration. Can you just share briefly about how, where you come from and, and where you're going? Uh, yeah. Well, I've been a chiropractor for 19 years uh -huh. um, and have been in practice in pretty much the same location for those 19 years. Uh, but back in April, I had a fire in my office, which brought the whole office right down to the ground, right down to the slab. Wow. Uh, we weren't really able to recover anything from the office. Wow. So kind of makes you start to think about where you want to be and what you want to do and you sure. know, putting a plan in play. So I said for my patients, I needed to be in another office within a week. So I was able to accomplish that and started to practice Amazing. out of another practitioner's office two days a week just so that I could continue to provide care to the patients that I had in my practice. Three months later, I was able to find a previously existing chiropractic practice um, wow. that I was able to put a new face on and rebuild my practice. Um, in the course of all of that, though, I found a great opportunity up here in Harrison. Uh, so I was able to join... Uh, Westchester Family Chiropractic. Uh, I started with them back in October. So I'm building my practice here in the Westchester area uh, while maintaining my practice down on Long Island as well. So That's great opportunity to expand chiropractic, you know, and, you know, my hands and cents into, you know, a new area. Sure, and you walk the walk and talk the talk, and, and the element that we hear from positive affirmations such as when you're down, just get yourself up and go again. You did that, yeah. and you're an inspiration of oh, it. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, that. Yeah, as well as being a uh, accomplished athlete, you do... Um, well, that, that's what creates a lot of the drive for what I do. Right. Um, I was exposed to chiropractic uh, when I was six or seven years old, and my father got injured. Uh, so I kind of grew up in a chiropractic office, going there with my father who had been injured and was receiving chiropractic treatment. Yeah. Uh, but I'd been yeah. an athlete my whole life, starting at five years old playing soccer. As a gymnast, uh, I transitioned to uh, diving, uh, competitive diving in sw with the swimming and diving team in high school. Uh, I played lacrosse through junior high school, high school and college. Uh, I went to Villanova on a competitive diving scholarship. So I've been around sports my entire life. Right. Uh, I got hurt playing lacrosse in high school. Uh -huh. So for two years, chiropractic maintained me through high school and then through college, my competitive diving career in college. Right. So when I became a senior in college, I had always been interested in healthcare um, and becoming a doctor, but the philosophy of chiropractic fit yeah. because it was more hands-on, um, sure. non-invasive, not your traditional. I didn't want to be symptom-based where I was just handing out medications. Uh, so it really fit my philosophy and the fact that I could help athletes with chiropractic, right. um, that right. was huge for me yeah. because it was big for me, you know, as an athlete to have chiropractic supporting sure. me as an sure. athlete. So do you have, uh, do you have a specific person that keeps you inspired and, and that go, get going ambitious? Um, well, there's, there's mantra. a lot of different athletes. Sure. Um, currently, uh, my passion right now is triathlon. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of cycling. Cycling is kind of my meditation too. That wow. once I'm out on my bike and out in, you know, that area, sure. that's when, you know, I can think and, you right. know, kind of decompress. Right. Uh, so a lot of cyclists and triathletes. Uh-huh. Um, one specifically uh, through Ironman. Um, I did an Ironman back in 2010, so looking for inspiration on how to, you know, uh, perform at that level. Um, wow. What, there's, um, NBC does a documentary on certain individuals in Ironman competition, and one is David Goggins. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a Navy SEAL. Mm. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of inspiration there as sure. an individual, as a Navy SEAL, but sure. also to see that you know, he took on the challenge of Ironman and triathlon right. and how he went about that. Right. So somebody like that is very inspirational sure. um, when sure. you look at somebody like that. Yeah. Now, in sports medicine, your emphasis, um, you're, you work with all sports, all ages. Absolutely. Um, I have athletes that are as young as 
you know, six, seven, eight years old uh, through high school and college. Um, I have amateur and professional athletes that are into their 30s. So all ages. Um, I like to educate myself and learn. So through that, I mean, I have a you know background in certain sports myself. So there's obviously a passion there. But when I have new athletes coming into my practice, it's an opportunity for me to learn. Right. So let's take a rower, for instance. I can really look at the posture and technique that's associated with rowing sure. and how can I help this athlete, um, not only with their injury, but to improve their technique so that they're not going to have a problem later on down the road. So I really like to see the variety of athletes coming into my practice because of that. Right. It's an education for myself as well. Right. And you've worked also in emphasis with lacrosse. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. I am hoping to be able to, Westchester is a big hub just like Long Island. Yes, it is. You know, with the lacrosse program. Yes, it is. Really hoping to be able to kind of make inroads into there sure. so that I can help some of the younger athletes Absolutely. that are looking to move on to college and play, right. you know, at a high amateur level. Sure. Uh, so sure. that's, you know, that's a passion of mine as well. And soccer. Um, I got hurt in, oh. you know, high school playing lacrosse. Right, right. So again, that when, it, when you look at lacrosse, mm -hmm. that's again a passion I see what it did for me and able to get me back to that level. Right. So I would like to do that for others as well. Yeah, and since you do it yourself, since you aspire to be a better and better athlete, and you have this openness that, that you indicated to me, this biochemical individuality that you tailor specifically for each individual, for each sport. Absolutely. And, and different Absolutely. modality. You know, the function that an athlete needs is specific to their sport. Mm -hmm. So we look at things biomechanically and we say, well, how does the body need to function right. while that person is involved with that sport? Sure. Um, sure. You know, so flexibility is different for a gymnast versus a soccer player. Right. Um, you know, right. the biomechanics of cycling is different than it is for swimming. Sure. So we need to look at everybody individually and say, how do we need to tailor treatment sure. to for injury prevention? injury management, right. but also enhanced performance. How do we make that a better athlete by improving their biomechanics? That's wonderful. Now, I, I don't know a great deal about the spine. Can you tell me why it's so vital in terms of the health of the spine? So um, basically what controls your whole body mm -hmm. um, is your brain. Your brain is the computer. Mm -hmm. The wiring harness or the wires that come out of the brain mm -hmm. is your nervous system. That goes to every organ system in your body. Uh, neuromusculoskeletal system, your cardiac system, controls your immune system. So a lot of that is, you know, your whole body is controlled by your nervous system. Right. Your spine houses that. So it's the, it protects the nervous system. If there's a kink in that armor somewhere, right. um, it's going to affect the way that nervous system functions. Okay. So it's going to okay. affect how well your body functions right. and whether it's functioning optimally or not. Interesting. The interesting, interesting thing about it is your spine is also the core of all your movement. Mm -hmm. That's basically what everything is tied back to. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the stresses that we see on day, you know, everyday life, whether you're an athlete or not, that gets translated back to the spine. Right. So it's right. trying to maintain the health there so right. that you can keep your nervous system functioning the way that it should be. Interesting. Interesting. So the integrity and the health of, of the spinal cord itself and the spine is vital in terms of many areas, not just with injury, but for just people in general. For general, you know, health and well-being. Right. Um, so that's why, you know, chiropractic can really be the core of mm -hmm. people's health. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, we're poised to be great primary care physicians in a mm -hmm. sense. You know, most people think of primary care physicians as, you know, sneezes, sniffles, um, getting a medication to handle symptomatology. But if you kind of change that view on healthcare a little bit right. and want to keep yourself healthy, right. chiropractic can really be a huge component in that right. by maintaining the health of your spine, your nervous system, right. and keeping your body functioning so that it can really heal itself right. and it can defend against the stresses of everyday life. Right. And it also has, it has to do in coordination with the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. Yep. So well. you have your, you know, your fight and flight, mm -hmm. which is, you know, if you're out in the wild, that's where it really started from. You know, you're getting attacked by some wild animal. You know, it heightens certain um, receptors. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. that you can either run a little bit faster or fight off that animal right. um, or be perceptive enough to escape and get somewhere. Right. Um, right. And then you have your body where it can kind of decompress mm -hmm. and it can go into more relaxation, 
where you're now going to digest when you eat and be able to absorb. Right. So it changes blood flow um, mm -hmm. to different aspects of your body, right. you know, whether it's to your muscular system so that you can run right. or to your digestive tract so that you can digest and, you know, absorb the food that you're, and the nutrients that you're eating. That, that's interesting. So Very again, interesting. the nervous system controlling all aspects of, all aspect of your life. Of it. Yep. So you've, uh, you've done Ironman, you've done uh, marathons. So what's next for Dr. Brian Yotis in terms of um, I what actually, are you starting to do? Um, so right now I have some cycling events that I'm looking at um, this year, um, kind of taking the distances and expanding them a little bit for myself. Mm -hmm. um, in the last year or two, uh, through my girlfriend, I've been able to be introduced to paddleboarding. Oh, okay. uh, so I'm taking on a few All challenges right. this year from a paddleboarding standpoint. It's actually great because it's it can be challenging and um, also relaxation, relaxating and meditative sure. in a sense as well. So I'm um, you know, uh, really starting to enjoy that as well. And you're doing it together. Yes. I just have to have one last thing since it's just happened to me. What is the best means when you fall on the ice and you hurt yourself? Well, I guess obviously it all depends on what type of injury you're talking okay. about. Um, but most of the time you're gonna have some sort of inflammatory reaction. So really managing the inflammatory reaction mm -hmm. of that injury that you have. Sure. Um, ice works, you know, really well. Okay. Um, so that's a natural anti-inflammatory. Right. Helps to, redu you know, reduce um, blood flow to that area. Right, right. Um, wanting to keep movement and activity. Okay. Um, you don't want to stress good. the area. Sure. But you want to have enough movement so that you can maintain range of motion. Okay. Keep flexibility within the muscles. Okay. Okay. Um, not some just natural, sit, not, me, not, not just, just sit, <laughs> no, because those muscles are going to start to <laughs> like shorten and tighten yesterday. up. But that's, you know, that's a lot of what I do as well. Sure. You know, when we're dealing with pain management or people that have injuries, most of the time is because those muscles start to spasm, shorten up, mm -hmm. you get heightened inflammatory reactions, mm -hmm. and that area becomes very stiff and doesn't move. Interesting. So okay. chiropractic, we're sure. really looking to maintain the movement. Right. And within the spine and other areas of the body right. so that you don't have that contracture wow. and get that stiffness and that I lack of function. I appreciate that advice. Since I was on a couch yesterday, but I was <laughs> icing it 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off. Good. <laughs> but uh, for so young, you know so much. And I can see how you could tremendously help all sports in, in, in what you know. Thank you. And uh, we have two minutes to, to wrap up. Is there any last minute things you would like to share with my viewers? Um, um, I know you're building. You know, Really, it's it's activity. Um, it's maintaining flexibility and strength and stability. Uh -huh. Those are key. Right. Um, a lot, especially nowadays, uh, everybody's tied to computers and everybody's tied to cell phones and tablets and commuting. So we see a lot of deconditioning and postural right. changes. Right. Movement, right. stretching, right. exercise. Those are the key components to maintaining the mobility that we create as chiropractors. So. Awesome getting a certain amount of exercise at least, you know, three days a week, and, you know, to, you know, 20, 30, 40 minutes of exercise okay. is huge. Getting okay. yourself up off the couch. Yeah. Activity is activity is key. And fresh air, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thank Talk you very much. Us. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Remember, when you eat well and feel great, something you want to do for the rest of your life. Remember, balance and moderation is key. Have a great night. Thank you for tuning in.